Chapter 1. The best way to communicate a message to humans is by telling a good story. Stories have always had the ability to mold people, whether in ancient times or in contemporary films. Everyone enjoys a good story, regardless of the means used to tell it. A common pattern in good stories is that a character faces a challenge and encounters a guide who helps them devise a strategy, motivates them to take action, avoids failure, and leads to success. So how do you use the power of storytelling to sell a product? Make a story brand of your own. Add in the opportunity to build a long-term relationship with your consumers and the ability to pose your product in an irresistible way. As a result, your customer's interest will be retained and your company will flourish without fail. When you have a compelling narrative that illustrates your brand, you can gain a competitive advantage. Donald Miller explains why the business is not the central character, how to cope with a challenge as an adversary, and why losing money is worse than winning it in Building a Story Brand. The chapters that follow will walk you through the steps you need to take to create a story brand that will draw customers to your company. Chapter 2. Clear messages that speak to customers' needs are essential for effective marketing. There is no space for uncertainty. Aesthetics are less important than effective language usage. You may have the most beautiful website on the block, but you're using language ineffectively. It's a waste of such elegance. Your message should pass the following information. Who you are. What you do. Why you are the best fit for the job. Customers should be able to comprehend your message and relate to your tale without difficulty. If they encounter difficulties repeatedly, they would not hesitate to move their company elsewhere. Your message must clarify your goals and every mission. The best message for your brand takes the customer's needs into consideration. It is crucial to always ask yourself if your product or service will be beneficial to people's survival. According to psychologist Abram Maslow's Hierarchy of Human Needs, it's critical to prioritize the services or goods based on how important they are to human survival. Physical requirements take precedence over psychological requirements. Consider this a pyramid. The most basic needs we have as humans are food, sex, protection, and shelter. Then there's the need for fellowship and companionship. The need for self-actualization is at the top of the pyramid. Understanding this hierarchy can provide the leverage to hone your message and entice your customers. Acceptance is what we all crave. We just want to feel like we belong somewhere. We must all eat and drink. Use what you've learned to illustrate how your product can help consumers meet their needs and thrive in life. If you're in the business of technical enhancement training, for example, your website must explicitly state that you teach people. Then, you must figure out how to craft a message that ties technical training to your customers' survival needs. You may demonstrate how professional training would allow them to earn more money and better care for themselves. Being skilled will also assist them in making friends with notable members of society. Chapter 3. A well-told story is organized information, which follows a seven-part framework. Sometimes we get so engrossed in a movie or novel that we lose track of time while enjoying the stories they tell. A properly crafted story has the power to retain our attention and improve our retention of the story. The fact that a good story is organized knowledge distinguishes it from ordinary speaking. We enjoy listening to stories because of our need for order and consistency. Since it is structured, we recall stories long after they have been told. Storytelling is an effective marketing strategy that makes messages stick. Unlike the erratic honking of cars and odd noises we hear and forget almost instantly, a good story sticks in the mind after a single listen, much like a melody. Music follows a set of rules and patterns that are easily recognized. A pattern can also be found in good tales. Make a message as infectious as a melody by turning it into a story if you want to project your brand. The Story Brand 7-Part Framework, also known as SB7 Framework, is a simple way to accomplish this. The SB7 Framework harnesses the influence of stories. The structure describes the seven most common story elements. Character, Problem, Guide, Plan, Calls to Action, Failure, Success. The remaining chapters in this summary will explain each of these modules in turn. For now, a skeletal explanation of how the components fuse together is given. In every story, the protagonist is the focus of attention. Their character is at the center of the plot. They have a strong desire for something impossible to obtain. This issue is caused by this complexity. Just as they are about to give up, a guide appears and proposes a solution to the dilemma. The guide instructs the character to behave in accordance with the strategy. 
To escape failure, the character must stick to the plan in order to fulfill her first desire. This story arc can be crafted for every type of brand. Once you've got your script sorted, it will provide the ammunition you need to win and keep the attention of your customers. The next chapter will zoom in on the character. Chapter 4. The character in your business story are the customers, and you should focus on one desire. Every good story has a hero. The Harry Potter series has Harry Potter. Game of Thrones has Jon Snow, depending on the season you're watching. The hero of an effective brand story is the customer. Allow your story to revolve around your client's wants and needs. Tell the story from their perspective. It will stay with them and they will automatically seek you out when they need something in the real world. The need will be associated with your brand. Consider a travel company as an example of how vital it is to make the customer your main character. This company's website features stunning scenery from around the world, as well as their beautiful offices and a story about them. In essence, it discussed all but the consumer. This is a good example of what not to do. The message is ambiguous and does not answer the customer's needs. They showcase their business rather than focusing on what their company will do for the consumer. People may enjoy the beautiful landscapes and offices, but they are unable to relate their needs to what you are saying. Your website should talk more about the people who use them than you. They should easily see why they need to contact you and what you bring to the table. In your brand story, your customer must be the main character. Engage them by focusing on their needs. Concentrate on one desire to become more dominant. It's pointless to mention all of your resources. It would just confuse the clients and make it impossible for them to see how your message addresses their needs. Someone at the travel agency soon realized that customers want to travel easily. As a result of this discovery, their website was redesigned to emphasize how their services relieve their customers of the pressure of making travel plans. The message became more succinct and direct, and everyone was aware of the travel agency's services. Chapter 5. By turning the internal problems of your customers into a villain, you can keep them interested in your offer. How does your product or service solve customer problems? The second component of the SB7 framework focuses on identifying the problems your customers face and proffering solutions to these problems. Companies tend to sell solutions to external problems but people buy solutions to internal problems. Donald Miller People like being heard. Simply stating the issues that your customers face will pique their interest in the solution you offer. Clearly state the issue, demonstrating that you understand where the shoe hurts. By communicating your awareness of your customers' challenges, you communicate understanding. In a story, having a hero isn't enough. There has to be a bad guy somewhere. As a result, this obstacle or dilemma that the customers face must be portrayed as the story's protagonist, who must be defeated. It's helpful to portray distractions as a villain if your product is a time management app. Make all that steals time into a mini-villain, and these villains will become the main villains. Internal issues may often be more urgent than external issues. Feeling stressed that you don't have enough time to relax could be an internal issue for which the time management software could have solutions. If a customer's home needs painting, the fact that you are a painter would not persuade him to hire you over another painter. However, by making a villain out of the fact that he may own the ugliest house on the block, you may be able to show him how to solve this villain by hiring you. Tell the house owner that you are one of the only painters who can use paint to restore the house's elegance. Chapter 6. A careful combination of empathy and authority will guide your customers in the right direction. In the movie Lord of the Rings, Frodo bears the horrible weight of the One Ring. Like every other story, the hero finds himself in a difficult situation and needs to navigate his way out of it. In this time of confusion, a guide appears to clear the path and provide support to the hero. Frodo had Gandalf the Great as his guide. The guide can take any form. It could be a teacher, a parent, a team coach, or in the case of Frodo, a wizard. The primary role of the guide is to enlighten the hero on what can be done to achieve something greater than what they thought was possible. In your brand story, your organization is the guide. Its aim is to assist customers in overcoming obstacles in their lives. There are two key attributes you must have to present yourself as an effective guide, empathy and authority. Empathy establishes the foundation for a trustworthy relationship. It demonstrates to your customers that you are aware of their situation and can empathize with them. Only if you establish a relationship with your customers will they take your advice seriously. Empathy makes customers trust you, while authority is established by being consistently competent. 
Being overbearing or condescending does not create authority. It is won by acting with honesty and following through on your promises. You must demonstrate that you are capable of carrying out your promises. Please deliver. A constant demonstration of competence is the key to establishing authority. At this point, all of your story's major characters have been identified. You know who the story's hero, villain, and guide are. It's time to tell a gripping story. Chapter 7. Laying out a plan is the key to ensuring your customers commit to a purchase. The fact that your customers trust you and your ability to deliver does not mean they will commit to a purchase. Buying a product or service is a different process altogether. You must come up with a working plan that will guarantee their decision to make a purchase. Consider a group of people who need to cross a stream to get to the other side, but don't want to get muddy. As a guide, your job is to throw stones into the water for them to walk on so they can get to their destination without getting wet. Your scheme is made up of crossing stones. A process plan and an agreement plan are two methods of laying out a good plan. Demonstrate how to make a purchase or make the purchase completely risk-free for your customers. The process plan is a diagram that shows the customers what to do. It instructs them on how to purchase and use a product. Explaining the process reduces customer frustration and increases the likelihood of customer retention. If a customer wants to get a product, they may have difficulty deciding if the product is a right fit for them. You need to help by listing the steps they need to take to ascertain that they are making the right choice. These steps form the process plan. The second method, an agreement plan, helps to eliminate the fear of purchase. For example, offering a money-back guarantee or assuring customers that they will leave with products that meet their needs and standards will boost the likelihood of making a purchase. Chapter 8. Direct or transitional calls to action will guide the customers toward making a purchase. Encourage your clients to take action. Do not wait for anyone to notice you. Every day, an average of 3,000 commercials are broadcast to customers. As a result, if you want to be selected, you must stand out from the crowd. Make a direct call to action to prod your customers in your direction. Make a statement that is both bold and straightforward. Provide several calls to action on your website. Use a variety of terminologies and distribute them on the website. Direct calls to action include phrases like click here to buy, buy now, and register. Another way to get consumers to make a decision is to use a transitional call to action. It differs from a straightforward call to action in that it aims to build a positive relationship with consumers rather than attempting to persuade them to make a purchase. The aim remains to persuade them to make a purchase. Direct calls encourage customers to place an order while transitional calls encourage them to return to you next time they have a similar need. Each time they encounter the problem that your product solves, they think of you and not the competition. To do this, you need to offer them something significant free of charge. Kind gestures stick with customers and make them return to you in the future. Chapter 9. Exposure to the implications of failure can provide motivation for customers to buy. The possibility of the hero getting killed is why we stay glued to the screen in a movie. We want it to end well for the hero, but we are not unaware of the possibility of the hero suffering a loss or losing his life. Jon Snow died in Game of Thrones and was not brought back to life until the next season. This kept everyone enthralled. Your brand story should capitalize on the fear of failure because this fear guides our purchasing decisions. Behavioral economist Daniel Kahneman published a paper in 1979 that revealed the dissatisfaction people feel after a loss is usually greater than the satisfaction they feel from a gain, even if the quantity remains constant. For example, it will hurt more to lose $500 than to gain $500. When making buying decisions, people are more interested in avoiding loss than pursuing gain. As a result, you must be explicit about the drawbacks of not purchasing from you. For example, a professional advancement training organization that aims to teach people how to give public speeches or presentations must mention the risk of career stagnation that comes with not knowing how to talk in front of a community. You must also demonstrate the dangers of deferring such training before they believe they will need it. An insurance company that seeks to protect people against potential losses must accentuate these losses in their advertisement and show how buying their insurance will guarantee protection. Chapter 10. Share a vision that shows your customers how your product will transform their lives. The fact that things can go wrong for the hero is one of the things that makes stories so powerful. When you're the protagonist in a novel, 
You don't want anything to go wrong. After dangling the risks of not purchasing in front of the buyer's eyes, your company must spell out the happy ending that your product provides. Beyond the product, create a vision that your customers can share with you. Nike, for instance, has a slogan that says, just do it. They use it to remind their clients that they aren't just selling shoes and sports apparel. They believe in living a life that is full of inspiration, zeal, and glory. Every customer is welcomed to join us in this conviction. Starbucks was delivering more value than just coffee. They were delivering a sense of sophistication and enthusiasm about life. Donald Miller How can you create a vision that your customers will be willing to share? Three strategies can be useful. Status, completeness, self-acceptance. It's time to sell. When you make provisions for something like a premium package that offers extra services that others do not, you will find that people aspire to that status. People are drawn to what they don't have and what sets them apart from others. Sell the idea of completeness. Customers must be able to see the possibility of fulfillment of your product. They should get the impression that without your product, they are incomplete. As a result, they should aspire to surpass all others in order to be united with what you have to give. Self-acceptance and realizing your ability is the third approach. Allow people to feel at ease in their own skin. Assist them in accepting themselves as they are. They would associate with you if the product communicates with ordinary people and tells them that there is nothing wrong with them. When the movie's good guy nerd finally wins the beautiful girl's heart, it gives all male nerds a sense of identity, elevates their status, and makes them feel whole. There is a happy ending to every story. Did you know, Nike was founded on January 25, 1964. Conclusion You can make your marketing efforts effective and rewarding. Use the StoryBrand 7-part framework to create and communicate a clear message that addresses the needs of your potential customers. The framework has seven modules that are essential to telling a riveting story. Character, problem, guide, plan, calls to action, failure, and success. The main character in your brand story must be your customers. Everything revolves around them. It is their problem you are trying to solve. The story must focus on them. Identify a specific desire and make it into a problem that needs to be solved. This problem is the villain that the hero of the story must vanquish. Present a troubling situation that the hero must find help to resolve. Your company is the guide that provides wisdom and help to the hero in the hour of need. Show clearly that you understand their frustration and have the capacity to help them out of the quagmire. Lay out the steps that must be taken to defeat the villain or assure your customers that they are in safe hands and the only outcome of this situation is success as long as they follow your guidance. Prod them to take action by asking them to buy your product, direct call to action, or encouraging them to establish a relationship with you, transitional call to action. That will make them remember you whenever they have this need. You can do this by giving them a memorable gift. Explain the dangers of not taking decisive action now and show them how making the purchase makes them part of something greater than them. Sell a vision and not just a product. The sense of identity and belonging will create a long-lasting bond of fellowship between your brand and your customers. Try this. To show your customers that your product will help them achieve their dreams, associate your brand with someone who is already successful. Take Red Bull, for example. They associate with successful athletes to show that Red Bull gives you wings. To whom or what can you associate your brand to feed your customers with inspiration?